you know, something is really off when you have Disney, Harry and Meghan, Star Wars, Pat Tillman, Snow White, and a sports award all in the same sentence. It's like Disney's pitching a new twisted reality show. How to trash everything you love all at once. But here's the kicker. Disney's not just destroying epic franchises we grew up with. They've now been caught red-handed abusing an American hero's legacy, all to boost the popularity of a spoiled prince and his fame-hungry wife. Never paid attention to Meghan and Harry before? Now might be the time to start. Because the couple just teamed up with Disney to crash our culture and hijack our heroes. The reason is simple. Disney is so desperate to stay relevant, they'd pin a purple heart on Mickey Mouse if they thought it would trend on Twitter. What's going on, folks? The epic battle between light and dark is on. A real clash of the titans. It's Disney versus the fans. And Mickey just flashed us all, giving everyone a front row seat to his cultural strip show. Disney has spent recent years focusing more efforts on their seemingly strange take on diversity and less efforts on the type of content and entertainment. Now, when Disney tapes won, we met Disney's senior vice president of business affairs, attorney Michael Giordano. As you'll recall, Michael made it clear that Disney not only blatantly discriminates in their hiring practices, they consistently pass over candidates who are more qualified for candidates who are less qualified but check the boxes that are consistent with their DEI hiring philosophy. Certainly, there have been times where, you so know, you just, know, there's no way we're hiring a white house person. Just kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? There's no way we're hiring a white house person. Here's where it gets downright diabolical. If you're not on Disney's corporate approved list of moral preachers, you mean absolutely less than zero to them. They even deny disability services to a fan in dire need. I mean, hell, even Scrooge handed out turkeys in the end. No, not Disney. Hi, my name is Trisma Magajas. I was recently denied the disability access services here at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. Um, I was in substitution, provided the return to line where if I had a party with me, uh, my party would wait in line and I would meet up with them for re-entry and I wanted to make this video to show that no matter the severity of a disability, Disney has their own standards that they've created that determines whether or not you apply for their specific accessibility service, which mainly, and she described it as severely disabled or cognitively disabled. Disney's no longer satisfied with just destroying beloved childhood classics like Snow White and smashing the Star Wars saga like a pinata for Hollywood's agenda fiesta. Nope, they have grander ambitions now. Jeannie Giornani, the creative marketing director at Disney, was asked about allowing LGBTQ content to be shown to children. Jeannie agreed that he wants children to see the content and that it is, quote, the unspoken thing. But I despise those kind of people that want to accuse of Disney of children. Like, but I also want children to see LGBTQ content. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Well, that's the spoken thing. Am I going to see a drag queen at, at Disneyland or anything like that? Do you want to do that? Get get a drag queen at Disneyland. The undercover reporting shows that the Mouse House is moving full steam ahead, morphing from the magical kingdom that Walt dreamed up, a company that made movies we all loved, into a corporate mind control machine. And their strategy? Simple. Sell the Hollywood message. But first, they have to drive away all the fans that built their original empire by embracing divisive figures like Amanda Stenberg. That's the lead actress from the Acolytes here. She came around to lecture us all peasants on how hard it is to be an oppressed Hollywood millionaire. Trevor asked what I want the people to know. I said white people cry. What's the call? The fact is, alienating the loyal fan base isn't enough for the studio. They want to break everyone's spirit. And to do that, they're rewriting reality itself, gutting our heroes one legend at a time. Um, thank you, Elizabeth, Israel, and Kirsty. Um, stay here. You need to be with me. Um, I'd like to begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to everyone at the Pat Tillman Foundation, led by Marie Tillman Shenton, who I'm so honored is here tonight. I'd also like to acknowledge the Tillman family 
especially Mrs. Mary Tillman, Pat's mother. Her advocacy for Pat's legacy is deeply personal and one that I respect. From the big screen to real life events, Disney continues to exert its influence over the culture and how heroes are represented, or not for that matter. Over at ESPN, which Disney just happens to control, they staged the ESPY Awards, where they handed the Pat Tillman Award for Service to Veterans to none other than half-baked Prince Harry, who's known for royal desertion, family betrayal, and wrestling his Xbox player. Boom. Yeah, that's the guy, the one who betrayed king and country for a Netflix deal and a mail order bride named Megan, was celebrated for his heroism against the wishes of Pat Tillman's mother, a gold star mom. And those just happen to be the moms that lost children serving in the armed forces. Meanwhile, Megan clapped on her meal ticket like a seal, also the cameras could catch her. Megan's performance along with Disney charade didn't go unnoticed. A petition over at change.org was signed by over 77,000 people to signal their disgust. Even after the SB awards have been finished, the outrage continues to grow. Prince Harry is the complete opposite of Pat Tillman and opposes everything that Pat Tillman stood for. Pat Tillman gave up a luxurious life in the NFL to fight for his country. Harry gave up a life of serving for his own gain, his own monetary gain. He does not deserve this award. He is not on the same level as this man. Out of it all, it is Pat Tillman's mother who suffered the most, and she didn't hold back. I'm shocked as to why they would select such a controversial and divisive individual to receive the award, his mother, Mary, told the Daily Mail. For the past 10 years, the recognition has been given to Purple Heart recipients, Iraq War veterans, Army sergeants, Paralympic gold medalists, and most recently, the Buffalo Bills training staff for their life-saving measures when Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin, went into cardiac arrest. Mary told the Daily Mail, there were other individuals who do not have the money, resources, connections, or privilege that Prince Harry has, and she felt those types of people should be recognized. There are recipients that are far more fitting, she said. A mother had to watch Disney transform her son's memory into a participation trophy for simply being alive. It's like the studio declared, congratulations, Harry, you breathe oxygen. Here's your award. For those who may not know, Invictus comes from Latin, meaning undefeated or unconquerable. We live in an age marked by polarization and division. Conflicts rage around the globe. Anger and resentment towards those who are different seem to pervade societies everywhere. Talk about cranking up the crazy to 11. This manipulation of heroism and legacy that Disney has done has sparked a critical question. What can we as viewers and fans do to challenge this twisted narrative? So we're gonna continue this discussion. And as we do, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, share this video and join the movement to keep our stories authentic and our heroes respected. You know, the word hero is thrown around a lot today, yet few actually deserve that recognition. So I thought we would learn a little bit more about the veteran that Disney disrespected. You know, times like this, you stop and think about just how, not only how good we have it, but what freedoms were allowed. A day after 9-11, Pat Tillman knew he could do more. He gave up his NFL career to join the U.S. Army Rangers and ultimately lost his life in the line of duty. In today's age of instant gratification and selfishness, Pat Tillman stands head and shoulders above the rest long after he has passed. The man actually embodied all the virtues of a modern day hero, chief among them being loyalty, honor, duty, courage, sacrifice, and compassion. You know, at one time, he turned down a $9 million football contract from the St. Louis Rams because he refused to turn his back on his teammates at the Arizona Cardinals where he was making $3.5 million. That's the type of person he was. Unlike Harry, who betrayed his men by turning his back on them, who flew from the United Kingdom, all to go to a Lion King premiere to build his relationship with Disney and to try to get his wife Megan a job. Yeah. Rather than attending the most important memorial they have So he goes and supports year, his wife. As rather than be event. where he should have been doing his duty, he's, he's hustling his wife's movie voiceover business to the head of Disney. I think you're that, way too harsh. Yeah, I know you think I'm way too harsh. Yes. I'm telling you, I don't think I'm harsh enough. That is hustling. Really? I don't yeah. think you could get much harsher. OK, but you know what? It doesn't mean I'm wrong. This is just brazen hustling by a member of the royal family to a senior boss of a major entertainment company trying to get his wife voiceover business on the same day he should have been 
with the Royal Marines in his capacity as the Captain General. After fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Army offered Tillman to cut his tour short. They're saying the NFL is calling, but he refused to leave his men behind. And four months later, on April 22nd of 2004, he was killed by friendly fire in Afghanistan. That is the kind of man he was. And it's the reason why so many have been outraged that Harry and Meghan went to the ceremony, let alone that Harry got an award that he would later use as a popularity pin for a celebrity outfit. They probably have no idea about the award. They just say, oh, of course, yeah, let's put you up for something. Let's get you, you know, you can go give a great speech here at this American award show. And I got a chance to talk at the beginning of the SBs, but doing something like this is just obviously trying to piss people off. I, I, you know what I mean? It's just a gimmick. It's like you couldn't find yeah. like either some active U.S. military member or someone who can't serve anymore because of something that they did while serving right. who is some like there's probably hundreds yeah, and million. thousands of people that they could have found who could have benefited from this award but instead let's give it to prince harry disney is so disconnected from reality i bet you no one at their corporate boardroom of bud light drinkers ever thought to give an award like that to someone like actor gary sinise who spends all his celebrity currency on building homes for veterans and honoring heroes who serve our nation when i started the gary sinise foundation in 2011 we wanted to make home building part of the organization in 2012 we launched our rise program hello and welcome to the Dodson Family Gary Sinise Foundation Rise Program Home. The Gary Sinise Foundation, and Gary himself calls me. The caller ID says Gary Sinise. Well, hey, Doc. You almost hung up on him. I did. I almost hung up <laughs> on him. Gary Sinise here, bud. And he's like, hey, this is Gary Sinise. And I was like, what? <laughs> I wanted to give you some uh, some good news. We're going to go ahead and build your house. We got the official, you know, green light. If Harry had real character, he would have turned down the award. And he would have shown the world another side of himself. But not only that, he refused to go on stage alone. He wanted to have real veterans surrounding him as a shield from his critics. And he proved it. Because not 10 minutes after he gave his acceptance speech, he and Megan hightailed it for the nearest exit. Speeches weren't finished. The award ceremony wasn't over. But the Megans, they had enough. They were done. And that's all that matters to them. Um, stay here. You need to be with me. A few moments later. Everybody's pointing at you. You got to do it. Somebody pass this microphone down to her. Go. The reality is focusing on Harry and Meghan really misses the bigger picture. So we're going to leave the Megans aside for the moment, right where they belong. The elephant in the room is Disney. Disney owns ESPN, and Disney made the final decision to abuse Pat Tillman's legacy. It's the very same way that they abused years ago the rich universe that George Lucas gave everyone to enjoy by handing it over to current Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy to turn Star Wars into a soapbox for her activists to preach on. I think it wasn't until I was older and I could really understand things infrastructurally that I got, oh, right, Hollywood is a white institution. And that means that that representations within Hollywood are going to be extensions of white supremacy. I want to ask you both because this is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars, I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. It's pretty gay, let's be honest. But yeah. in my world, nerds are gay. I think white women need to kind of step up their game, to be quite honest. Like, sorry, but I'm calling, I'm calling you bitches out. Like, um... <laughs> I wasn't sure what type, I got so caught up in like what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using and being politically correct. And, and, and so uh, as I started to rise in television, I started to just get more blunt and just start saying like, I would like a black writer. Because if I said diverse, no, don't you know, you, you, get, you get, well, white is diverse, which is something somebody said to me. And I was like, wow. I almost forgot Kathleen Kennedy's handpicked director for the next Star Wars movie. Yet another puppet in a long list of losers that doesn't focus on story and entertainment, but is obsessed with fueling her activism and anger. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> when Disney can't silence their critics, they recruit their mainstream media puppets to paint independent voices as villains. Also, they can continue to build a new empire of programmable followers that are ready day one to worship on the altar of woke ideology. Um, you have received horrific racist backlash, including threats. 
We welcome criticism of the show when it comes to sure. storytelling or performance. Um, but when it comes to death threats, um, horrific, violent, racist language. So what's the proof? Where's the proof? Well, I dropped a diss track. <laughs> Classy lady, fun gal, full of STDs. Take the recent Acolyte fiasco. The series just mercifully ended its first season and hopefully its last. The show has been roasted and torched by everyone for everything from its cheap thrift store wardrobe, bad production values, and writing that is so uninspired it makes filling out tax forms look thrilling. And wooden acting that is so cringy it can even make Meghan Markle look like a contender for the Oscars. Oh, yeah. But we did what he asked. We paid him. Master Benestra, uh, Senator Raincourt's here to see you. Where is he? I'm he's in there. You let him in the control room? Hmm. But worse than the flat performances and bad plot armor is how Disney flipped the script. The studio actually transformed the legendary good guys, the Jedi, into the bad guys while taking the classic villains, the Sith, and rebranding them as misunderstood saints with bad PR. That's right, Disney Star Wars Sith are now peddling Hollywood's new DEI philosophy of living your truth. Even if that truth means, you know, a little like genocide. It doesn't matter, it's all peachy king, because they're being their authentic selves. Even if that means being bad, it's still good. What do you want? The freedom to wield my power the way I like without having an answer to Jedi like you. And the Jedi say I can't exist. This isn't just crappy storytelling, folks. It's a cultural strip mining operation where Disney is tearing up all the values we cherish and then twisting them into their exact opposites under the banner called progress. It's eerily identical to the strategy that they used when they wanted to deconstruct a princess into an evil Queen Karen. Last year, they cast Rachel Ziegler to play Snow White. Snow White. The actress actually hates the princess as written originally by the Brothers Grimm and is probably about as thrilled to play the character as a vegan is happy at a Texas barbecue. The, the original cartoon came out in 1937. There is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. One song, I have but one song. Weird, weird. It's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. It's Hollywood, baby. Surprise, surprise, Snow White is in reshoots. Who couldn't see that one coming? And audiences' backlash continues to grow with every Disney decision, sending their stock tanking into the toilet. And once again, it's under $100. And then you have the Acolyte, which happens to be the worst Star Wars thing since, well... The last Disney Star Wars thing they butchered, which was called Ahsoka, where lightsabers had more use as glow sticks at a rave than being the legendary elegant weapons for a more civilized age. A few moments later... Okay, but answer this. The Rotten Tomatoes audience score for The Acolyte is somewhere in the gutter with Meghan and Harry's current popularity post their veteran dishonoring escapade. Just like the Megans, you got the corporate cheese chasers over at Mouse Central refuse to change course. Get this, not even theme parks are safe today. Disney World just yanked Liver Lips McGraw from Country Bear Jamboree. The drunk bear has been singing and entertaining kids for 50 years, but suddenly his drunk singing bear vibe just doesn't jive with Disney's new delicate sanitized world. If you thought this kind of narrative gymnastics, though, was solely confined to crappy TV shows, bad big screen films, and theme parks, think again. Disney's been using this formula across the board, both in fiction and reality like we just saw. They keep insisting that in their world, up is down, left is right, right is wrong. And wrong can be right if it ticks all the right corporate quota boxes. Their end strategy? Control. Disney wants to crash the culture in order to command the future, and to do that, they have to kill the heroes in order to kill the dream. Well, 
It's not going to happen because the mouse house overplayed its hand by using a Patriot as a pawn. If Disney Studios had just stuck to their sandbox using their limited talent pool and treasure to trash the stories we love, most people wouldn't have noticed. But now everyone is paying attention. So once more, we sound the horns to bring a giant to its knees. If you enjoyed this video and found value in it, hit subscribe, smash the like button, and share with everyone you know, and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is, we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.